Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I am Tom, and today we're going to continue talking about interviewing for jobs at the office. But more specifically, we're going to be talking about gender diversity in the workplace, which is kind of related to the last article we talked about in our program last time. Sylvia and James were discussing the possibility of hiring Donna. Or Edward,、yeah. and they decided to go for Donna because she's a woman. She might understand the needs of their female customers better, and they wanted to diversify the workplace. Yeah, I really didn't look at this very much when I was hiring people. I just wanted good people and people with good skills, but also people who would get along with other people. Because you know what, we spend a lot of time at work, and it's never the work that usually bugs us. It's the people. So you hopefully are in a good group and you all get along. There's nothing better than that. That's the best. But we're going to continue talking about gender diversity in the workplace. I feel like、uh, here at AMC we're very diversified, and I hope that whatever company you're currently working for, you find the same thing. And more important than that, we hope that you're happy in the workplace and at your job, and you're enjoying what you do. And if you don't enjoy what you do, Look into changing your career path because so much of our lives are spent at work. So that's it. We're going to go through, read this article, and then we'll be back to talk about some of these phrases and vocabulary terms. AMC Recruitment Consulting, a firm that specializes in hiring practices, has recently carried out a survey. Relating to gender diversity in the workplace, they found that increased gender diversity brings with it a number of benefits. First of all, a more diverse environment means people with different points of view can contribute their opinions, leading to better ideas overall. Teams with greater diversity have also been shown to be better at problem solving. These advantages don't just apply to gender diversity. It's also important to hire people from different racial and national backgrounds as well. Improving gender diversity also benefits a company's reputation. It helps boost recruitment, as the company is seen as a more inclusive place to work. Having gender equality in management positions. Also shows gender is no barrier to career advancement. Finally, a company with an inclusive culture is better able to retain its staff, as people appreciate working in an office where it's clear everyone is treated equally. Of course, companies need to care about the bottom line, and there's evidence gender diversity helps here too. Several studies have shown that a gender diverse workforce. Makes a company more profitable. Other studies show that investors are more likely to support a company with obvious gender diversity, as it's a good indicator that the company is well run. AMC Recruitment Consulting concludes that companies should be actively looking to increase the diversity of their staff. Okay, today we're talking about gender diversity. In the workplace, so diversity, of course, refers to having a lot of different kinds of something.、Mm -hmm. If it's gender diversity, of course, you've got men and women, and that makes it quite diverse. And this, of course, is talking about having lots of different men and women in the workplace,、mm -hmm. in the office where you work. Now, this is, of course, a fictional company that we've made up for <laughs> the purpose of discussing this topic here. Yes. And of course, we don't want to talk an actual real company because they might sue us if we get the information wrong or something. So today's company is called AMC Recruitment Consulting. Okay, so of course, recruitment is all about finding people to fill positions, either for your own company or for someone else's company. If you're talking about the army, for example, and they're looking for a few good men to、mm -hmm. serve in the armed forces. Then they do recruiting.、Uh, of course,、uh, in the United States, it's all, all voluntary. The military in the United States is all voluntary, so they have to do recruitment. They have recruitment centers that、uh, young men and women can go to and say, "Yes, I'm interested in joining the army or the Marines.、Uh, what do I need to know?" 
We actually had a recruiter in my last job in New York, and we were a small company, so we didn't have a human resources department. And our recruiters, we had two, and they were both great ladies. And they would go to colleges and、uh, recruit our new hires from college campuses. Typically, it was just you know the Ivy Leagues that they go to, Harvard, Yale. That was primarily where they would go. I'm not kidding. So yeah, you can recruit people to different things. Recruiters can be kind of a fun job. So anyway, we've got a consulting firm here that go around and help people with their hiring practices. Aha! We use firm instead of company with different industries. In particular, if you're a lawyer, you never work for a legal company. It's always a firm, a law firm, and typically the owners of that firm. Are a group of people who are at the highest level of that particular firm, and they split the proceeds of the profit that they make each year. Accountants will often work for accounting firm like KPMG is a huge global accounting firm, and of course consultants. I worked for a consulting firm in New York, so we've got a firm that specializes. If you specialize in something, guys, it's something you're really good at. You've probably had a lot of practice, maybe years of experience doing that thing, or maybe in college before you graduated, you took some extra courses in a particular area to help you specialize in that area. Artists will specialize sometimes in painting or in sculpture, or you know what what is their medium? What do they specialize in? And singers, you can specialize in different genres of singing or music. Some people really specialize in classical singing or Broadway musical theater, or maybe hip hop. Exactly. So doctors, of course, can specialize in different areas, etc., etc. You get the idea.、Mm -hmm. So again, this is a firm that specializes in recruitment consulting. So they also specialize in hiring practices, which means you know the trends that companies have regarding who they hire. So this particular firm has carried out this survey. Which relates to gender diversity in the workplace. So, of course, here the verb phrase to carry out just means to conduct something. You organize this thing and you do it. You perform this survey. So, basically, they sent out survey forms to different companies and asked them questions about hiring practices, especially in regard to gender diversity, whether they hire men or women, etc., etc. And they found that increased gender diversity brings with it a number of benefits. So, of course, you can look at this a couple of ways.、Uh, you could say it's a company that's mostly male. Maybe they'll benefit with some more female in the staff. Or, as Stephanie said last time, she's seen a lot of companies that are mostly women. So maybe a primarily female company could benefit by hiring more men.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to mention here with carry out this verb phrase, guys. Sometimes it can be replaced with conduct, and here is a good example: conduct a survey. You can conduct an investigation, carry out an investigation. But if you're talking about music, you can conduct an orchestra, but you can't carry out an orchestra. No. Or in the military, you can carry out orders. If you're a soldier and your、um, commander gives you an order, you can carry it out, but you can't conduct an order. That's weird. So sometimes you can simply replace it with conduct, and sometimes you can't. So it's good to look into that. We use carried out and conduct a lot in both our speaking and writing. So let's go down to the next or the second paragraph of this, and it says: first of all, a more diverse or a varied environment means people from different points of view can contribute their opinions, leading to better ideas overall. If you have you know a variety of people, you have different opinions. Instead of the same kind of people who all believe the thing, same things have the same background, same experience. Sometimes you never hear things that are very different from what you've experienced. Contribute means to give. So sometimes people will contribute money to charities. They'll donate money to charities. Sometimes you can contribute in other ways. Maybe you contribute your time and help that way. Here they're giving their opinions. And if you're in a group of people and you all have different opinions, sometimes it just it leads to coming up with better ideas after everybody's given their own viewpoint, their own opinions. Yep. So to contribute, to contribute is the verb, and contribution is the noun. 
We all want to make a contribution to life, for example, to help out the world, etc., to play a role. So, of course,、uh, lots of people want to offer or contribute their opinions, and that leads to better ideas overall. Now, here it continues to say teams with greater diversity have also been shown to be better at problem solving. That's a big part of running companies. Of course, you are going to run into problems at various times. Gee, we have some problems. Shipping our products to Nanto County for some reason. For some reason, it's very expensive to send products there. We need to solve this problem, or we've got a problem with our exports going to Japan. For example, they're charging us too much taxes there. We've got to solve that problem. Otherwise, our products don't make a profit there. So, indeed, if you have that diversity, you get lots of people contributing their opinions, and you can solve problems better. Now, of course, we're talking about gender diversity, meaning male or female, but there are other kinds of diversity as well. And here, this sentence at the end of the second paragraph mentions this: you could have people from different races and different national backgrounds, different countries. All of those things adds to a variety of opinions and viewpoints. So it's kind of nice. Moving on to the third paragraph, improving gender diversity also benefits a company's reputation. If a company has a really good reputation, it just means good people will want to work for that company, and that's important. If you're a recruiter, especially, you want to get people who are excited to come and interview for your company because they've heard good things about it. So it will help boost recruitment. If you boost something, guys, you lift it up. You help it go up. When I was young, growing up, we had you know lots of kids in the family, and so if we'd go out to eat to a restaurant. We wanted to make sure they had booster chairs and booster seats, especially booster chairs. Sometimes the kids are old enough to、uh, sit up, but they need—they're too small, so they don't reach the table. So you would often ask the waitress or waiter to give you a booster seat, which would just help them sit up a little taller, a little higher. If you want to boost your sales, typically you come up with better advertising. Slogans or ads or marketing ideas. Here we're trying to boost recruitment or raise the number of people who want to come and you know apply to work for your company. Sometimes it helps boost this because your company can be seen as being more inclusive. If you're inclusive, it means you include everybody. You don't exclude anybody. If you're in high school, junior high, you often have little groups we call cliques. C L I Q U E. It's a French word. Click. Just a little group of people, and they only want their kind of people in that group. They will keep out other people they don't approve of. If you're inclusive, you welcome everybody. You don't keep anybody out because they aren't exactly what you're looking for. All right. So the opposite, of course, is exclusive. It's an exclusive club. They only allow certain people in. And inclusive means they take everybody,、yeah. and you might attract lots of people that way. Hey, I'd like to work for that company. It seems like they've got quite a diverse staff of people. They've got lots of men and women. They've got some people from Africa working there, from South America, etc., etc. Hey, that sounds like a pretty cool place to work. It's inclusive. I'll feel welcome there. And having gender equality in management positions also shows gender is no barrier to career advancement. So yes, if you've got people in management positions that are both male, female, or from different countries and places like that, it can show that hey, there are no barriers there. If I work for this company as a woman and I see that there are other women in management positions, hey, I'll think that I can get promoted eventually.、Mm -hmm. So there is the possibility of a rising or climbing the corporate ladder,、right. so to speak, and I might stay at this company. For the rest of my career. So finally, a company with an inclusive culture is better able to keep its staff to retain its staff. They don't, you know, want to go job hunting so often. As people appreciate working in an office where it's clear everyone's treated equally, that's really important. So, of course, companies need to care about the bottom line. If you're talking about a company, the bottom line of any company is profits. If you're not profitable. You're going to go out of business, and if the company goes out of business, no one has a job. So you want the company to keep its profit. So you know you want to be diverse, diversified in the workplace, but you also want to hire really good people. And sometimes that means 
having more men or having more women. Sometimes because you can't find the right person of a different gender or race or nationality. Because honestly, companies aren't there just to do nice things for the world. They have to make a profit. That's the bottom line:、yeah. making that money.、Yeah. And of course, there's evidence to show that yes, having men and women on your staff will help you turn a profit. It will make your company more profitable if you have those people on your workforce. Now, other studies show that investors are more likely to support a company with obvious gender diversity, as it's a good indicator that the company is well run. So, of course, these companies oftentimes are looking for investors, people who want to put money in the company for a profit, and they will support this company which does have this gender diversity because that means it's a good indicator. That the company is well run. If they can hire these different kinds of people, that means it's a good company. Hey, that is a good investment for me. An investor could just be a person who buys stock in that company too. And you always want to invest in really good companies that are healthy, that are going to continue to make a profit, because you don't want to lose your money as an investor. It's a good indicator if people have a diversified workforce. Is a phrase we'll often use. It's a good indicator that the company's well run or run well. You could actually flip those words. A good indicator. An indicator is just some sort of sign. An indication is a sign as well. A good indicator that I'm going to have a good day is when I wake up on time and I get up and I go exercise. It's a good sign I'm going to have a good day. But if I sleep in too much and get up late, yeah, my day usually doesn't go. As well, so AMC Recruitment Consulting—it's the name of this fake firm <laughs> that we've made up. It concludes. I remember it has done a survey. From its research, it concludes that companies should be actively looking to increase the diversity of their staff, meaning not just gender diversity, but racial diversity and national diversity. Where you're from, what country, and what part of the world you come from—all those things. Our way to diversify your workforce. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher just one time because this is our TOEIC unit, and then we'll be back to take a look at these discussion questions. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. We're going to continue the discussion we had last time. We talked about selecting people. We need to be careful about the gender diversity. So, this article will look at how selecting people in the workplace has a positive effect. 这里说到了 recruitment consulting 这家公司，它是一个专门做招聘工作的招聘咨询公司。这个地方要注意的是时态，因为他说这一家专门做招聘工作的公司呢，最近完成了一项对于这个职场性别多样性的调查。Recently 这个字，它代表近来，代表最近。可是我们要注意的就是，当你句子里面用的 recently， 它通常就跟什么时态连用呢？没错，就是现在完成式。所以注意到 has recently carried out 用的就是现在完成。接下来这个调查当中，他们就发现，你如果增加了性别多样性的话，对于一个公司团体来说是会带来一些好处的。好，我们注意。句构里面 ，they found。我们知道 found 这个动词，其实我们常常拿这个动词来解释所谓的 v o c 这样子的句构，也就是它受词、受词再加补语。可是呢，这个地方的 found 后面，它倒不是 v o c， 它是一个子句，一个 that 引导出来的子句，作为 found 的受词。也就是说，他们发现了什么？他们发现的这后面整个的事实，意思就是说 ，found 动词后面用 that 引导一个子句出来，当做名词子句作为 found 的的受词。我们继续看它到底有什么好处。所以谈第一点的好处，它用的偏于 first of all。第一点，如果有了这样多样化的环境，那就表示说。有不同观点的人，然后大家会贡献自己的意见，这样子会让整个的表现会有更好的想法。当然，这是第一个好处。那他后面就进一步解释了：如果一个多样性程度比较高的团队呢
，他就会有更好的能力，会能够来解决问题。注意到，当我们说你在某一方面很行 ，you are good at something， 我们通常介系词 at 再加擅长的那一方面。那这个地方 be better at。Be better at problem solving, 就是你在解决问题上面也就有更好的能力，有这样子的优势。不是只有说性别上如此，种族啦、国家背景啦，其实也都一样。所以，我们再看下面第二个优点，也就是 benefits a company's reputation. Benefit， 我们说过它是动词，表示有好处、得利。但是它也可以当让什么获得好处，它有益于什么？这个地方的 reputation 是指公司的声望，它有助于公司的声望。不过我们刚刚那一段谈第一点，这一段谈第二点，它中间有一个 also， 这就是一个所谓的转折词。我们瞬间下来，让你的文章有一种 coherence。你知道刚刚的那一点跟这一点有区别开来，它也可以这样。那有助于公司的声望，当然，因为公司这样子的话，就会被认为是一个怎么样的公司呢 ？A more inclusive place. Inclusive 这个字意思就是具有包容力，它更有包容性。这样子的话，就有帮助你做人才的招募。而且呢，其实我们晓得，如果你进来的人了解你这个公司的立场，那他就会觉得我在这里。不会因为我的性别在职业发展上、升迁上受到影响，所以这边有提到 shows gender is no barrier to career advancement. No barrier to. 我们晓得 barrier 代表的阻碍，而它后面加介系词的话是用 to。这个 to 是介系词哦，造成什么的阻碍？那在职业的升迁 ，career advancement 不会。造成是一种阻碍，在最后这段就说了第三点，一个公司它当然会在乎说到底有没有赚钱，所以这边提到了 care about the bottom line， 它的赚钱营运状况，当然有没有赚钱最重要。可是根据这些研究表示，如果你有性别多样化，这样子这个公司通常获利会更高，所以这边提到了 more profitable。其他的研究也表示说，投资的人因为你是这个公司是有性别的多样化，就会愿意把钱拿出来。那这样表示，嗯，你的公司因为性别多样化而也是一种可靠的指标。所以，因此这个 AMC 招聘咨询公司获得的最后结论，也就是下面说到的。The companies should be actively looking to increase the diversity of their staff. 照理来讲，如果公司想要营运的话，就要积极的寻求增加员工多样性。好，我们今天讲解到这边结束，谢谢您的聆听。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Beyond just having different kinds of viewpoints, if your company that produces products that you want to market and sell all over the world, you know, if you're wanting to get into, let's say, the Taiwan market, and you're an American company, if you can actually hire someone from Taiwan or someone who's lived in Taiwan and experienced the Taiwanese culture, you're going to have a lot more success. You're going to know what to expect, what kind of products they like. If it's a food product. You're going to find out that you might have to alter your menu. I think it's really interesting to、uh, go to some of the restaurants here that are from America and how they've changed their menu 
to appeal more to the customers here because you know everybody, every country has a different cuisine and their tastes are all different. It's kind of fun. Indeed. So of course you want those benefits from diversity in your company. So what I'm thinking about is the year-end party. Okay, you've got the way ya、yeah. at the end of the year. And of course, oftentimes at those year-end parties, you have like singing competitions, karaoke, or performances. So if you have a diverse staff, you'll have a very interesting way. Yeah, okay. You'll have different people going up on stage and singing different kinds of songs. If you have men and women, the men can play the bass parts and the、uh, baritone parts, and the women can be the alto and soprano. You can have some really wonderfully sung songs at your way yeah at the end of the year. And maybe some very interesting performances as well. So that's what it's all about. And I'm not just joking here. Of course, the way ya is very entertaining. But in the office as well, you know, sometimes when you're kind of talking to your coworkers and telling jokes and stuff, if you have different kinds of people telling different kinds of jokes, you laugh, you have a good time, and you're more productive as a result. Okay. And here's the next question: Should there be laws to force companies to be more diverse in their hiring policies? You know, it depends on your outlook on you know economics. I'm for free market policies. I don't think companies should be forced to do anything. I know in Taiwan we've got a lot of laws that are made to force companies to do certain things. I think if you make bad decisions, you'll go out of business. If you make good decisions, you'll stay in business. So I'm a libertarian there. I like freedom, especially in the market. I like free markets. What about you, Tom? Pretty much, yeah. You probably can't force these companies to. Force diversity; otherwise, they're going to hate you for it. You know that's the way kids are. If you force them to do something, they hate it. If you force them to play the piano, they probably hate it. So, if you let them play the piano for fun, they might enjoy it better. So, yes, indeed, I think a company should realize this for themselves that having a diverse staff is actually beneficial for themselves, and they don't need the government to tell them what to do. So, you can discuss this amongst yourselves. Maybe you have a different opinion. And that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Thank you for listening, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. See ya.